Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video I wanted to give you guys an update on how the Death Knight is doing in Shadowlands. I know a lot of my videos recently have been about other specs and more general videos, but it's about the time where we get back to the DK and see what's what. I will mainly be looking at the two DPS specs because I don't really play Blood too much uh, unless it's like a third tank for a raid boss. So first looking at the Frost DK, there have been quite a few changes since the last time I talked about it. Um, they have nerfed Obliterate damage quite a bit, which was mostly aimed at the Obliteration build since it was doing so much of its damage with Obliterates. Um, but funny enough, nerfing Obliterate damage seemed to hurt Breath of Sindragosa build a little more than it did the Obliterate build. And it does seem a little bit weird. But the Breath of Sindragosa build, ever since the Obliterate nerf, has kind of like fallen behind a little bit. I have I did raid testing recently and I tried out both of the builds. And on single target, Obliterate just seems better. Also, very recently there was a change to the Night Fae Covenant ability that's due to now cause it to only stack up to 8% strength, down from 15, so it's been nerfed by 50%, huge nerf. Um, and also they changed the way it stacks. You now have to cast Obliterates to actually stack up the percent strength. And that is a very big problem for us. So as a two-handed Frost DK, you can only get about four, maybe five Obliterates in on single target uh, with your deaths due down. You pretty much just have to be spamming obliterates and you can't do that because you need to be weaving them with either Howling Blast procs um, or Frost Strikes to be constantly proccing that obliteration talent. So it poses a pretty big challenge uh, to actually stack it up. So not only was it nerfed to how high you can stack it, they also nerfed how you stack it. And it is a big issue. Uh, to kind of compensate for this, they added an extra benefit to Death's Due, which is that in your Death and Decay, or your Death's Due, whenever you obliterate, it will hit one nearby target. So this allows you to stack two stacks of the strength buff at a time, each time you obliterate. So on AoE and Cleave, you are able to stack it up to 8%. Now, there's also a big discrepancy between dual wield and two-hander because of the way we stack the new deaths do, it will stack each time your obliterate does damage. So that means that with dual wield, where you're dealing damage with your main hand and offhand weapon every time you obliterate, you will be stacking it twice as quick. So on single target, once you cast four obliterates with dual wield, you're at max stacks. On AoE, you only need to cast two um, obliterates and you're at max stacks. That skews the new deaths do heavily in favor of um, dual wield when it comes to stacking your strength buff. However, the extra obliterate that you get from hitting an extra target while you're in your death and decay makes it so obliteration is absolutely insane. Especially Mythic Plus, you will be doing a huge amount of damage with obliteration. On any raid bosses where you have um, adds spawn, at a set interval, you will be doing a huge amount of damage with Obliteration. And I'm a little bit sad to see this because that's kind of where the Breath of Sindragosa niche lied. Whenever you had two target cleave, three target cleave, four target cleave, anything along those lines, that's where Breath of Sindragosa was strong. And Obliteration pretty much took over the two target cleave game. Um, even up to three targets, Obliteration just outperforms by a massive margin. It really needs to be a high number of targets for Breath of Sindragosa to be any stronger. So it's a little bit worrying to see. Um, I guess it depends on the playstyle that you prefer. But from Mythic Rating and from Mythic Rating standpoint, uh, I do prefer Breath of Sindragosa. Even if you don't like the playstyle, there is no argument that Breath of Sindragosa is typically much more useful from a progression standpoint than Obliteration is. So another big issue with Frost DK that um, has been recently brought to light, even though it has been in the beta ever since the beta has been introduced, is weapon swapping. So this has been kind of in the background because people were kind of testing it out. But in one of the recent builds, our Glacial Advance got changed 
to now um, apply Razor Ice whenever it hits an enemy. And this introduces a very weird dilemma. So while you have Glacial Advance talented, your Razor Ice will not fall off of your target even if you do not have a Razor Ice weapon equipped. So someone came up with a playstyle where you swap between four weapons. You will be swapping between a two-handed weapon every time you obliterate, a dual wield set that has Razor Ice on it to make sure you're maintaining and stacking up the Razor Ice debuff on your targets, and a dual wield set with Rune of Hysteria on it. So you're sometimes proccing that extra um, resources from it. So this means that you're essentially able to play with three rune forges instead of just two. And also your obliterates will be doing a lot more damage because every time you obliterate, you'll, you're swapping to a two-handed weapon. This is probably the biggest point of contention uh, that has been uh, brought up recently, is that this cannot make it into the live game. Um, they need to break it. Weapon swapping cannot be a DPS gain. It incentivizes such bad gameplay. First of all, you will need to get four weapons to make this work. You can make a lighter version of it work with three weapons, but if you want to take full advantage of it, you do need four weapons. And it's not even a massive DPS gain. It's just every single one of your abilities will need to be macroed, and you will need to min-max your Razor Eye stacks a little bit on your target. So... I really hope that they fix this because as a class that's on the DKDH Warlock weapon token, it is very unlikely that you will be getting four weapons for Mythic Progress. So that is where one of the big issues with Frost Decay is, and I really hope that they fix this. And lastly, Frost Decay still seems to have a few dead talents. Um, I've talked about these in the past. In the first tier, we have Inoxorable Assault. It is absolutely dead. It does barely any extra damage, so this needs to be heavily buffed. In the second row, we have Horn of Winter. The resources you gain from it are just not enough, so the resource generation needs to be increased quite significantly. In the fourth row, Frost Sight has been buried deep, to the point of it's not worth taking in any situation. Frost Sight should have its place. I don't think it should be the go-to talent in, like, anything that's two or more targets, but Frost Sight should have a place in the Frost DK gameplay. Currently, it does very little damage. It doesn't stack your deaths do. Uh, that's a huge part where they could improve it. So, for example, when you dropped your deaths do, if you Frost Sight, you would get one stack of the strength buff per target hit. So in two Frost Sight, you would be at max strength. And that, in and of itself, would allow it to have a niche. If you're a Night Fae and you're in AoE, you would take Frost Sight so you can quickly stack up your strength and then from there on you obliterate. But currently it's so weak and has no interaction with our kit, you just don't play it. Then in the level 45 row, Glacial Advance poses kind of a weird dilemma because it has a cooldown. So if Glacial Advance was essentially just an AoE Frost Strike with no cooldown, I absolutely support it, and it would be awesome to see it in use, because if you take Glacial Advance, it would allow you to take Fallen Crusader on your two-handed weapon. So this would allow you to stack your Razor Ice with Glacial Advance, and then have Fallen Crusader on your weapon. But currently, stacking it is just way too slow. Casting one Glacial Advance about every five seconds is just too slow. It, there needs to be an upfront benefit of of uh, stacking up your runic power and then just dumping it uh, so having casting three glacial advances back to back to stack up those raised rice on every target in front of you so a big change that they could make to glacial advance is removing the cooldown otherwise i don't think it'll see too much use and then the last row obviously ice cap it is a dead talent uh, obliteration hands down better breath of Sindragosa, hands down better Ice Cap just has no place in the Frost DK gameplay right now. Um, and that's in a big part because it lost all of the interactions it had with like Azerite traits um, and stuff like that from BFA. So if this talent has is to see any use, there needs to be either like Icy Citadel added to it as a passive or Frost Whelps Indignation added to it as a passive. It needs something extra to actually be useful. 
or they just need to even further buff the CDR that you get on your pillar. But I'd rather they added an extra effect to it. So outside of that, Frost DK is performing really well in raiding, in Mythic Plus to an extent, but in Mythic Plus it kind of gets outclassed by some of the other stronger melee. In Arena, I expect Frost DK to also be really powerful. So overall, I am really looking forward to Frost DK, and I hope that they address some of the issues that have been brought up by the community. Alright, so now let's take a look at the Unholy DK, because this spec is in a very weird spot right now. So, in my most recent DK video, which was the talking about the abysmal Unholy DK changes, um, I talked about how they merged Dark Transformation and Apocalypse, which was reverted less than 24 hours later. So, we got that going for ourselves. Gargoyle is still a talent, and unfortunately they did not address absolutely any of the issues that they meant to with the changes that they made in the first place. So they simply reverted Dark Transformation and Apocalypse, they unmerged them, um, so they're two abilities again, but we still have the same issues. We're heavily uh, resource starved, you're sitting around for a long time. Unholy DK has tremendous potential on AoE Burst, uh, with like the Unholy Pact, Unholy Assault build, you do a ton of damage when you run into a pack and you pop all your cooldowns. But then you're just standing around. And on single target, it's even worse. Because on a single target, you will have a nice little burst window at the very beginning of your rotation. And then it's so slow. Oh my god. Um, and especially once you get to execute, where you need to be saving runes to cast Soul Reaper it becomes even slower. So I am not exactly sure what's happening with Unholy DK. Um, Damage-wise, it's fine. So on AoE, on single target, the damage is fine. The big issue is the gameplay. Having very slow resource generation um, means that you're sitting around for a long time. And sitting around, not pressing buttons, is the least fun gameplay in my opinion. Um, but that just might be me. So for Unholy DK, I made a whole document. It was like a three-page document. Um, I might link it in the description box or you can find it in my Discord where I talked about everything that needs to change about this spec from talents, baseline abilities, what needs to be buffed, what needs to be nerfed, things that need to be changed, bugs with the class and spec. There's a lot of stuff that can be improved on Unholy DK and we're nearing pre-patch. Um, at this point, I'm assuming pre-patch will be happening within the next week and a half, two weeks. So there's not much time left to make these changes. And if they release on Holy DK like this, because they just didn't have the time to actually fix the spec before Shadowlands went live, I will be very disappointed. Um, obviously, if it does good damage, I will still play it if I have to. But it's very sad to see on Holy DK in this state, just because Unholy is by far my favorite melee DPS spec to play, and after the promising changes that they were making to it in the beginning of Shadowlands, it's kind of sad to see it fall down the ladder. So, I'm not going to talk extensively about the changes that I wish they made, because those are all outlined in the document, but essentially our resource generation needs to be improved, and that means either removing Soul Reaper or reworking entirely how it functions, we should get resources from Soul Reaper. Each and every time we press it, we should get resources. So that would mean that our gameplay doesn't slow down in Execute, it actually speeds up. So Unholy DK would feel much better to play once the boss hits 35%. Because currently, once you get to Execute, Unholy DK feels worse to play. And that makes absolutely no sense. So I really wish that they changed Soul Reaper. With Unholy Blight, there's a very minor issue of the duration that you get on Viral and Plague is like 5 seconds shorter than the cooldown of Unholy Blight. So you have a 5 second window where you don't have a dot out. Um, so that's just a little OCD thing that I hope they fix. Either by reducing the Unholy Blight cooldown by 5 seconds or increasing the Viral and Plague uh, duration by 5 seconds. Then, um, in the last tier, Summon Gargoyle needs to have a look. On single target, Summon Gargoyle, especially on boss fights, should be our go-to talent. But it's just not strong enough. Doesn't do enough damage, 
and it loses AoE value completely, which is fine. The AoE value, I don't care about. It needs to do single target damage. If it's going to be a last tier talent that's purely single target focused, it needs to be the best in single target scenarios. So they need to increase its base damage and increase the ramp rate um, of you spending runic power. It needs to be at least 1% per 1 runic power if they're not going to increase the, the base damage. But increasing the base damage gives you a better um, opportunity of tuning it correctly. The Night Fae nerf also impacts on Holy DK to some extent, because on single target, where you will most likely be playing Defile, you will be able to keep up your Night Fae strength buff essentially permanently. But there's a very, very, very narrow window of opportunity where you need to refresh your Night Fae strength buff before your Death and Decay disappears. And it's like 0.5 seconds. And this will allow you to keep it up essentially perfect with perfect uptime. So I really wish that they extended the duration back to 15 seconds um, instead of 12 seconds. I understand that they needed to nerf the ability, but they went about nerfing Death's Dew in the absolute worst way they possibly could. This also means that the other covenants need to have a look and a tuning pass because they looked at the Death Knights and they were like, okay, everyone's playing Night Fae, let's just absolutely nerf that ability. But that doesn't solve the issue. The reason we went to Night Fae was not only because Night Fae was strong, which it absolutely was, it was also because all the other ones were absolutely so bad. So having your Kyrian, your Necrolord, and your Ventir abilities be pretty much useless in most uh, scenarios, Ventir had some very niche uses, Necrolord has a niche use in PvP, and Kyrian had no use absolutely whatsoever in any situation. So instead of going and looking at those and be like, okay, how can we make these better so they actually serve a purpose in certain scenarios, they just looked at our strongest one and nerfed it. So I tweeted about this as well. It's just as important to buff the weak covenants as it is to nerf the strongest ones to bring everything in balance. Those are my overall thoughts about the Death Knight in Shadowlands and moving into Shadowlands. Uh, let me know in the comment section below what do you guys think about it, um, what do you hope that they will still change before it's too late and it needs to go live as is. Um, I'm curious to hear what you guys think. Again, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.